talking about artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence first, and we, we hear it all the time, but I just wanted to take a step back and actually explain what it is um, so that maybe it makes a little bit more sense because there's a, a preconceived notion out there that it's, it's growing and the robots are going to take over the world and we're all going to lose our jobs and actually John's going to talk a little bit about some of those things too, but just to talk about what that is. So I asked ChatGBT what AI is because I felt like that would be a good way to explain it. I said, how would you explain artificial intelligence to a group of adult learners in one sentence? Artificial intelligence is the development of computer systems that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence, such as learning, reasoning, and problem solving. So basically, we're teaching the machine, and then the machine is becoming smart. Does anyone have anything else to add to AI or any concerns that you've heard about AI or that you might have? Any limitations? I know a lot of people talk about creativity, that no matter what happens with machines, they're never going to be able to be creative. And we're actually going to show you that in a moment that that's not accurate. So now we're finding out that the machines are learning themselves. So really the goal of artificial intelligence, especially in the business sector, is to build systems where humans and AI can work together. So we have some real world examples we are going to show with you. Customer service, chatbots. Is everyone familiar with a good old chatbot? Chatbots are very, I use these with clients, especially with their social media platforms, because you can already go ahead, you know the questions people are going to ask, you can create a chatbot for that. Virtual assistants, um, personalized marketing, so the algorithms, you can analyze customer data, you can you know, look at the patterns, um, predictive an analytics, businesses use it to analyze large volumes of data. It helps making accurate predictions about customer behavior, market trends. It's all that stuff that if we as humans did, it would take us forever. Do you guys remember the movie Hidden Figures? It came out a couple years ago. And about the, the, they were computers. They weren't these computers. They were, and especially the female computers. And then when that big IBM, IBM machine came in, they had to learn something different because what was done by hand was now being taken over by the computers. And of course I had to put data because, you know, obviously. Um, fraud detection, that's something else that AI can help with, um, especially if you have something like an extremely large data set and identifying suspicious patterns. It's not always right as we know because sometimes you're buying gas, you know, maybe you went to a conference in South Carolina and then all of a sudden everything is shut down because it thinks that someone stole your card. But it, it does you know, help with things like that. Supply chain optimization. Um, this one's really neat, the natural language processing. It really can help um, analyze and understand social media posts, um, sentiment analysis, what does something sound like? Um, so that's kind of a neat one too. Automated data entry and processing and then risk assessment and management. So these are all just examples of how the companies that have invested millions and billions of dollars, how they're utilizing it. But that's not what we're gonna it's exactly go over with you guys today. We wanted to give you a taste of it and how you can use it in your real lives, in your businesses, um, so that hopefully this afternoon or on Monday, you guys can start utilizing some of these strategies. Oh, I forgot, product recommendation and decision support systems. All really big things, but there are ways that we can bring these types of strategies and applications into our businesses. So we're gonna start by, we're really focused today on utilizing ChatGPT that I know a lot of people have heard about, seen about. This link right here, the chat, um, this is the one that I wanted to show you all. If you don't have this, and we can email you or put in the show notes as they say, um, that link. Who here, raise your hand if you have started to use this chat GBT. Okay, good. So there's a handful. If you haven't, it's chat.openai.com. And to sign up, it's free if you want the free version. They just ask for your email address. I've not received any spam emails from them, so that's good. Um, and this is what it looks like when you, when you open it up. And they have examples. So when you're looking at chat GPT, there are a few things that, um, you know, it'll say, remember what a user said earlier in the conversation. So it will, when you are typing in chat GPT, it's a, it's a, um, it's a chat bot. And it 
actually kind of learns as you go along, if that makes sense. So the GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, because of course we couldn't have simple words. It has to be <laughs> something fancy. Um, it was originally developed by a company, OpenAI, in 2019. Um, but really, as, as Pat was saying, it, people really didn't start to pay attention to it until about, I mean, mainstream people didn't really start to pay attention to it until um, about you know last fall, I'd say. So there is an upgraded version that's available. But the generative part is what makes it stand out from a normal chatbot. So it doesn't just regurgitate information, it's actually going to manifest new things. So that's what sets it aside. Um, it, it, it's the machine is learning, it's getting better. And I found, and maybe this is just me, I don't know about you guys, that the more I use it, I feel like it's understanding more what I'm asking. And the more specificity I put into it, the more I get out. Um, so, I don't know if you know the acronym TLDR, too long, didn't read. <laughs> Basically, it's just a really, really smart chatbot that produces coherent answers to conquest, complex questions. But there are a few limitations that you really need to be, know, uh, to be aware of before you start using it. So it occasionally can produce incorrect information. I was working on a graphic for a client, Gaston Alive, and it was all of the fireworks celebrations in the county, because those posts go viral, and it's really great for engagement. So here, I'm going to everybody's website, and I'm trying to pull all of it, and this one, and it's always like Stanley, or somewhere that I always end up missing one of them, mm -hmm. even though I've searched. So I thought, well, why don't I just go ahead and throw it in ChatGPT and see what happens? And it very assuredly, with confidence, told me wrong information. <laughs> and I thought, man, if I didn't know that was wrong, I could look at this and think that this is accurate. So be careful with that. Make sure you're checking for accuracy. It also may occasionally produce, look at the, like, just grammatical errors and spelling errors, guys. I'm so sorry. They occasionally produce, not product, um, harmful instructions or bias contact. I have not yet ran into that. But I know that there are people that have. So just really the accuracy, I think, is the number one thing to look out for. But just know that it may have something that is not, I'm not going to say it's not appropriate. They really do have a great filter for that. But occasionally some things may come through. And you may have something with a bias on it as well. So we, I'm going to show you guys a couple of really quick things on ChatGPT, just if you haven't seen it. Um, and then we're going to have a quick conversation about going back to can it be creative? Because I think that's something that people say, well, I mean, it's a machine. It's a computer. It's never going to be creative. Just wait. One, um, I, was, I was listening to a podcast the other day about this, and the gentleman said the first time he saw it, the one word that came to his mind was terrifying. <laughs> OK, so here's some ideas. I named mine Spark. Actually, I didn't. I asked mine what he wanted to be called, and he said he wouldn't give himself a name. And then I made him, and then he said Spark. So I think he got a little frustrated <laughs> with me, but I could brainstorm idea for my kid's birthday. You can find recipes. These are like your normal not work, you know, different things. Create summaries. Um, found out you can do language translation for over 95 different languages. Not sure how accurate that is, but if you're in a jam and you say, how do I say lettuce in Spanish? It's going to say lechuga. Like, I mean, it, it's going to have basic things. I don't know about sentence structure, all that kind of thing. Um, writing assignments, we're going to have a little discussion about that, too. But let's go ahead. Someone throw out something we want to ask it. Throw out something. Let's brainstorm <clears throat> ideas for Go ahead. My kids are really into Pleistocene era um, megafauna. So maybe put in there megafauna from 12 million years ago. Megafauna? Like flora and fauna. Yeah. I speak fluent, John, so I got, yeah, megafauna. Is it megafauna? Yeah, you yeah gotta, megafauna you from it. 12 million years ago. Years ago. And we're going to ask for, um, please give me, I would, uh, you don't have to use please and thank you, but I just, <laughs> yes. it's, it's, you know, my mom taught me matters. Okay, please, um, please share 10 examples 
of megafauna from 12 million years ago. During the Miocene epoch, Earth was home to various fascinating megafauna. Here are 10 examples of notable creatures 20, from that time. 20 foot ground sloth, are you kidding me? See, the, you, know, you didn't know that today you were going to learn about the Entelodon, Just commonly known as the killer pig. Thank you, John. You could that. not have That's prepped this. Incredible. Right. From the so, Ice Age. So, let's what say is you. Megafauna? Ask it that. Oh, megafauna. great idea. So, yeah. what is Please. megafauna? Keep it short. Please. Yeah, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to say in, uh, I'll say in two sentences. The roller derby man. <laughs> I love it, megafauna. So it's thinking. It refers to a group of larger giant animals that lived in the past, typically during prehistoric times. These creatures, which include mammoths, saber-toothed cats, giant sloths. That's terrifying, a giant mm -hmm. sloth. I don't know why. Um, and play significant roles in their respective ecosystems. So... You here on the right, you can see, you can copy it to your clipboard. You can give it the thumbs up or thumbs down. This is kind of neat, and it'll say, what did you like about it? And you can submit feedback, and that's how it continues to get better as well. You can regenerate it. Let's say I didn't like that response. I just hit the regenerate button, and now it's going to do the same thing again in a different way. So um, one of the ways that I use it for writing, because I know a few people here said for content creation, um, I write a lot of press releases, and I hate, I shouldn't say hate, I detest, strongly detest writing titles, because I want it to be catchy, but it has to be to the point. And I have used ChatGBT for so many of those, and I'll ask for 10 if I don't like it, hit the regenerate response, and it'll come up with 10 more. So that's, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is all of this Oh, so this is just under my account, but I can, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see all the ones that I've, like, in the recent, you know, yesterday, previous days. You can see I was doing one on the tax values yeah. of Gaston County. I needed a yeah. title for that one. Um, and so these aren't public. You can't find my chat history, but I can share them with people. So, so generative nature is just building on what you do. And I think it's also pulling. Yes, and I think it's how many people are asking about the same topic, and then it's looking at the responses from those as well. Were you going to add something? I could. So, so the models that ChatGPT are trained on are trillions and trillions of data points that they have kind of searched the web on. ChatGPT is interesting right now because it's not using live data. It's September 2021. Mm -hmm is the last date mm -hmm. that it has recent information. Yep. So uh, there, there's a consideration there. It's not going to give you relevant information on things that have occurred more recently. Um, I don't know if that adds any color it to the conversation. It tells you that, too. If you ask it about something from September 2021 on, it says it may be incorrect because this is the last time that we did that. So it will give you a prompt sometimes. Other times, it will just tell it like it's, you know, I mean, like if you were like asking about like the Super Bowl, like how did the Chiefs win the Super Bowl? Would it give you a completely different game plan, I guess? Or would it be like guessing of how it would happen? It will probably respond in a way that says, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> how did the Chiefs win the Super Bowl? Let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. I don't have real time information or okay. access to specific events okay. beyond my knowledge in September 2021. Um, however, in general, the outcome of the Super Bowl or any sporting event is determined by a combination <laughs> of factors. So it doesn't, it gives you what I call, forgive me, the yeah. politician answer. Yeah. It tells you, like, I asked this question and you're going to give me something. I'm just kidding. I love politicians. Well, briefly, right, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. just like write a short story. Oh, I was going to, mm -hmm. I was going to say of mega fauna winning the Super Bowl. So watch, okay, so let, let me just back up for a second. Sorry. Sorry. This I'm guy, done. no, you're fine. I want you to do that, please. This guy right here, we are at the GBA, the Man and Woman of the Year event in Mount Holly, and he has his one, you know, Steve, he has a wonderful speech. He's a great MC, And at the end of the night, he shows me that he's used chat GBT to write it, but he also had it, he had the funny version, he had the real version, 
the fun the humorous version and then he had it sound like a pirate <laughs> <laughs> so instead of award it was like here come up here to accept your booty like i mean i was it was the funniest thing so we are now going to show the creative aspect of this it's hard to see yeah <laughs> i am a tar, never mind. <laughs> not that oh goodness i meant pirate okay yes That's a good point. That kind of information, because it, it, it is out there, right? Some That's a super interesting point, because actually today, Google released to their engineers to not put trade secrets, company info, code into their own chatbot, which is BARD, which we're not using today. Yeah, Honestly, I right. don't think it's as good as ChatGPT. Um, but it's very interesting, it's a very similar system. But they're saying don't put it in there because what happens is in the generative part of this, I'm not exactly sure how ChatGPT works, but the way Bard works is that it's creating this canon of information. And as it responds and as people put things in there, it can use that information in future answers that yes. other people are asking similar questions. Yes, that's what I, my interpretation of what ChatGPT is doing as well. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's doing it currently, but that's... I think the direction is definitely moving in as well. So, agree. Don't we're not putting any information that you don't, you know. I would say private information, confidential information. So, the creativity of this is this is the terrifying part. Okay? Right? <laughs> A short story about megafauna from when did we say? Um, from 12 million years ago, thank you. In the style of Dr. Seuss. I want you to see how fast this happens. Once upon a time in a land long ago lived the megafauna putting on a show. It Incredible. I just got wow. goosebumps. It just keeps going. I asked it the other day to rewrite the lyrics of a song do you remember doing that when you were little and you like change the rewrite? You know, if I wanted to rewrite the lyrics of a song, and it's not perfect, but it was close. Um, that right there is mind blowing to me um, because it's not regurgitating. It didn't find that from somewhere else. Okay, it didn't find that. It just literally did that. Oh, so remember these creatures from days of yore, the megafauna that roamed the earth's floor. In a time long gone, they lived with glee, a fantastical world of mystery to see. We had it write a Mother's Day song with, cord, with score, and it gave us chords and everything. It gives you chords. It does. It does. Now, I did ask, a friend of mine is a musician, and I asked him to look. I said, put, you know, put up the guitar chords for the Eagles, whatever song it was, and... I'll show you. Um, show me um, the guitar chord. Name a song, guys. Stairway to Heaven. If there are any musicians in here, you'll see what it does. It'll show you, but they're not. You know when they when you have it notated where it's underneath the right word, it's just all left justified. So it's the correct mm -hmm. chords, but you can't see where they go. But if you're a skilled musician, you would still be able to look at that and know. It just keeps going and going. And you can stop it. You can press stop. Because sometimes I forget to tell it, be succinct, write one paragraph, three to five sentences, under 150 characters, things of that nature. Um, I tried to do it for a Facebook or Instagram bio for a client because I was like, I hate when you're trying to get within the 150 or whichever one it is. It didn't take the spaces into consideration because I didn't tell it to. So mm -hmm. it, it ended up being too long. But OK, so now that you kind of have an idea of what that spark, so, I mean, you guys can name yours, whatever you want to name yours. But that was smart. But AI can be creative. It absolutely can be creative. Now, it's not going to replace a human, but it can be creative. So now, we're going to have John talk about some ethical considerations that already I saw some of your faces and someone, I, I think you said something about like writing essays or 
you know, you know, we have to change the. I don't. I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't think so. But but uh, no no no. We can just okay. leave it up there because honestly, this is going to be free form. I would like to hear your opinions on this. I mean, honestly, this is such an emergent technology that there is not clear and concise guidance around what we should be doing with anything. I mean, Steve's really asking me here today to absolve his conscience for how much he's using ChatGPT. That really is, it's an intervention, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, Steve. So, um, so I'll jump in on, 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 on just one. Is using AI plagiarism? Oh, look, that, look, whoa, that's so weird. Oh, what a, what are you, <laughs> our overlords are here. Um, so, so we can ponder upon this for a second. And I'll throw out some of my, my thoughts on there and some of what the internet says. If you're using ChatGPT to help write something and it's generative, it is not stealing someone else's work, right? You're not actively taking someone else's work, using it for your own devices is your prerogative, right? right? So if you're subscribing to this or using it either for free or paid, um, it's effectively your work at that point. But here's a, a bigger question. The information that these systems are using are being read from things that have been created by other people. So what is ChatGPT's obligation, much like Spotify pays music artists, for all the web content right. that they have vacuumed up and all the essays that Pat Mumford's written and all the information that mm -hmm. people have painstakingly collected over the course of the, their time, and it's just spitting that back out for us to use. What is, what is, is that, is it plagiarism on the other side? Is AI plagiarizing from us? And as you can tell in academia, this is a really, really important topic. Um, some have said this is the death of high school English, which just as a former educator, that, that, that's hard to hear because you could have a kid write a three-page paper on the megafauna, the effects of megafauna on, you know, the Earth's ecosystem in the southern hemisphere 12 million years ago, and boom, it's going to put something out there. Is it 100% accurate? Not sure, but could you check? Um, are there some students, adults, or, you know, younger students who may not use it as a guide or as a, an outline or as in just try and turn that in? And are there apps that can identify how much of it is AI, there are. So, I mean, educators are being armed to help with that. I tried it out yesterday with a press release. I didn't change a dang thing, nothing. Through copy paste, threw it into the you know AI detector. 100% false. It highlighted all of the words in red. Said 100% false because it could detect that it was AI generated. So, let's hear from you guys some of the things in response to what John and I shared. How's it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, with like the papers and stuff at school, I think you find kind of like a balance because essentially your student and everything still got to take the time to put the prompts in so they got to somewhat know the knowledge or the information to ask for. And one, they're probably going to make sure, yeah, I don't want to get caught. Let me double check it. Let me proofread it. So essentially, they all learning about megafauna. They're still reading it. I mean, I wrote a billion papers whenever I was in college. And after I was done with it, I knew that I just completely forgot what I just wrote because my mind just melted. So if you talk about like, what do you, the student potentially get out of it, they're still looking at the material. You know, again, to the ones, you're going to have those outliers that like, yeah, they're just going to throw it in and not check it and then probably get an F because it gets detected. But they're still, are still learning about it. Like high school English, you're still learning. They're learning what to look for, mm -hmm. I guess. That, and that's a really good point. And I think there's a couple different considerations. You have your own personal consideration. I really want my son, he, we're interested in like prehistoric histories. Like the Pleistocene was 2 million years ago to about 12,500 years ago, the last ice age. So there's no like morality and or, or negative mm -hmm. aspects of me Bias, putting in a prompt right. but saying, mm -hmm. hey, write a essay for a 10 year old about the Pleistocene. Um, but then you get to academia where to your point, is it ethical to say that I've done something when the purpose of an exercise is to, for you to create something and to judge your abilities to actually understand the data that's coming in and to 
recharacterize that and put it out there logically, right? So the question I think is, it's not plagiarism, so it's not like uh, violating some 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 law in that regard, but it's definitely unethical because you're now putting out something that was not your own work. So it's AIism. 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 We just created a new term. Mm -hmm. It's Pandora's box, and and ultimately, there's a lot of great and good and creative ways to use it now. But I feel like when it gets in the wrong hands in the future, we're going to see what it's capable of doing in the in the worst possible ways. So it's it's a double edged sword, just like just like when the internet started, you know. But um, I'm kind of it's cool now, but I'm I'm scared of what it will end up being capable of in the future. And the government is way behind on this, as far as putting guardrails on this. Um, so just like everything else. So, so hopefully they'll come up with a team and they'll figure it out with their experts on what kind of guardrails do we put on this. And another real life example is Wikipedia. Do you remember in the early stages of Wikipedia? Anyone could go in there and put anything in there. So I think as it's been crowdsourced for, I don't know how long, you know, I could ask, how long has Wikipedia been around? Um, it's, I see a similar trend here that everyone's excited about it. And to your point, at some point, guardrails are going to have to be put up, whether it's academia, if it's in government, you know, they're, they're going to have to be something in the world so that it's, um, it continues to be a useful tool. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about the happening with your job? Because that's a lot of people are, am I going to be replaced by AI? Is there going to be a computer that does my, my job? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we have a number, uh, number of questions here that we can throw out there. And I think that to just put a cap on the plagiarism, does anybody have anything else to add to that? I, I was, what I was going to say is that I think in a business context, if you're using this as a prompt and to help, it is absolutely A-OK -okay to go ahead and do that. And I don't believe that you need to cite that if you are, you know, giving a talk or preparing a document that you should put an asterisk in there said part of this document was prepared with AI. I don't think that is prudent at this point. I don't think it's necessary. And I live with an academic, so we go back and forth on this, not every day. But um, I think since the dawn of the printing press, this has been a challenge. And it just continues when books were out there and right. when the internet mm -hmm. and all that. So that's going to continue, and I don't think it's we're ever going to be able to put it back in the box. Um, but my thing is, you know, I send an email to everybody reminding them about today's meeting. That normally would take me about 10, 15 minutes to just say, there's all the stuff. And it took 11 seconds for me to put in, remind everybody about this, copy, make sure it's right, copy, paste, send, move on to 20 minutes of productive work or not productive work, and but that, not that. Right. <laughs> um, and I want to come back to that in just a second. What were okay. you going, no, that, that was yeah. a really good point. What I want to jump ahead, but we were talking about the AI detectives. What was, I read it, I think it was either the New York Times or something, we were talking about, didn't a didn't, uh, professor fail like half his class because he had like, an AI detective, but they said like actually they did not? It was something that the AI, AI detective messed up or mm. something? Mm. Mm. Average 95% accuracy the AI right. detectors is what is what I was in just recent, like in the past mm -hmm. week I've been looking at a lot of different ones and trying them out. Yeah. Um, and. Um, Again, it's pulling from so many millions and millions and millions of sources that um, I don't think it's going to be right all the time, but I think they're getting, just like AI is getting better, the AI detectors are getting better as well. Um, I would like to add mm -hmm. something. It's not necessarily about chat GPT, but there are other AIs that use actual artworks to make mm -hmm. other things, and that, yes. in my opinion, is definitely like a version of plagiarism to some degree. Because you're taking other people's artwork and you're saying, like, this is somebody's style. They created this on their own. And then you're saying, make something that looks like this in this style. Well, then that's taking this person's work that they've tried so hard to work on. And as a person that is an artist, like, that is very scary. Yes. Like, there for a bit, there were people that were really riding on the whole, I'm going to make a profile picture out of this AI-generated art. And it was really just pulling from other people's art. And it made those artists feel like, one, I'm not credited at all for this style. Two, this is essentially taking away my purpose here and things of that nature. So I mean, like, I think that there's good things. Of course, it can help them like chat GPT by all means because I use it. My partner uses it, you know, all that stuff. I know people that do, and it works great. And then there's art specifically gets a little mm -hmm. more. Yes. 
the right. image generation aspect of it. Yeah. You can also, for the image generators, you can say, show me a picture of, and you can come up with whatever you want. It could be Beyonce and George Washington crossing the Delaware. Yeah. And it will create an image, and that can then be put out in the media. Oh my gosh, did you know that mm -hmm. Beyonce and George Washington, <laughs> that's a really bad example. <laughs> But um, but even that. darker and more seedy things mm -hmm. and things yes. that people like go to the underbelly of the internet to find yes. are now being generated with AI and you're like okay well what is the ethical considerations of that and law yes. enforcement's having some issues there law enforcement's definitely struggling with that part too because instead of this was actually recorded now you can create generate your own content about whatever topic it is if you guys are picking up what we're putting down. So um, that, yeah, that's something we just have to be really, you know, careful about as well. And I'll, I'll <clears throat> throw this out there just to play devil's advocate because I completely agree with you. But mm -hmm. to take the alternative side of that, to get really philosophical, like what is creativity and what is originality? I've always had this thought too, which is like, what is originality if we are the synthesizing the things in our experiences? And then we're creating something on the backside of that. Like as an artist, you're influenced by all the art you've ever seen in your entire life. And so effectively is the AI creating original works based on other influences just like a human being would, right? Because, because I'm sure that there's a long lineage of artwork going back to cave paintings. And I guess to her point, like if Pat and I each wrote a book about the same topic, the history of giraffes, I don't know why, but that's, and I use AI to write my book, and he painstakingly never touched AI and wrote it as he writes and, and how people without AI would write, and then we're both to sell it. I mean, who put in more work? Yeah. And that's the artist thing as well. I have artist friends who said, I've worked hours and hours and hours and hours on mm. this piece, I, all, all of this, and then someone else just with one click of a button was able to generate something that looks similar and they're selling it and making it, not just a, it's about money, but just as an example, making the same amount of money for the same product. So I can see both sides of it for sure. Yeah, and I definitely do too. It's just from my own perspective as someone who has put hours yes. into things and who has taken so much time and consideration into like what I've made. And also I have other friends that are artists that it's like, then it almost feels like it's being sucked away from you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, like, an AI makes it, and you're like, <laughs> like, why am I here? <laughs> yes, yeah, right, what, what am I, right. I, I totally agree, and, and these, these questions start to swirl around one another, because one of my questions that is like, yeah, very uh, a light conversation, which is basically the underpinnings of capitalism, which are, who gets the wealth that's created by machines, right? So when, if we become like more and more and more reliant on technology and folks who control capital, and th this is not indictment of the system, right? I mean, I, like, I'm mega pro-capitalism, right? I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to leverage that. But um, I, I, you're right, I mean, digital artists are, are really, really profoundly affected by this. And it's an interesting conundrum, but um, I think if we kind of pivot to what's gonna happen to my job, if, let's just say from the perspective of a digital artist, right? I'm a muralist or I'm a, I like to create NFTs <laughs> or whatever the case is. Like, how does this impact my job? And, and I'll take a little bit of a more uh, rose colored lenses perspective on this is I really think that AI is democratizing um, creation of various things. And it ends up being a bit of a force multiplier. So if you are a, computer programmer, or if you are a digital artist, or you're a, a burgeoning um, you know, IT person, you can take a little bit of knowledge and multiply that. And if you have a lot of knowledge, you can multiply that as well. So ultimately, I think that's gonna make us better and more effective at our jobs, um, but there's gonna be a lot of disruption along the way. Um, I think primarily in knowledge work. Folks who are in um, kind of middle office type of stuff that is pr a lot of customer service mm -hmm. functions are Data going entry. to be, mm -hmm. be problematic. I think potentially even accounting systems are going to be 
um, impacted. Um, anything that we would perceive as white collar, um, that is like kind of mid-market white collar, non-creative type jobs, is, are, would, could be profoundly impacted. Just like we have screen time dependency, not just for children, but for adults as well. I think there could become an AI dependency as well. If I know that I need to get this press release turned into Steve by 5 o'clock this afternoon, like I got this thing in the morning, I'm going to lunch, I don't need four hours to do it, I need 20 minutes. Go back to my office, no Wi-Fi. Mm. What happens? If you, if you don't have access, if something goes out, if there's a brownout and there's you know no Wi-Fi for a while, I mean, we just have to also take into consideration not to become so dependent upon it that we lose the skills. Mm -hmm. I look at it as an enhancement. It's like my nails. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're my nails. They just have some hard stuff on top so they don't break and they look pretty. It's an enhancement. It's not a replacement. It can be creative in some ways. It'll never replace a human's creativity, in my opinion, but I think we can walk hand in hand and use it. So Any other? Oh, yes. Creativity is a, is a process in your brain, and if you don't necessarily have the brownout, you can't default to, well, I'll just do it myself. You don't know how to do it. You don't know anymore. You haven't done it. Or, or you, not anymore. If you're our age, you'll know anymore. If you're younger, you just don't know. Because the writing of the paper is such a great, and this is former teacher Mary talking, the, the, the process. I remember when I taught eighth grade, um, this is like 2000s, and they had the internet, and I made the kids write the paper without the internet, and they were mad. Hmm. I was like, in my day, we went to the card catalog, and the, you know. <laughs> but I said, I wanted them to learn the process of what that was like to shocker go to the library open up books. They were so mad. They still talk about it because now they're all like married <laughs> with kids. I'm like, remember you did that? But I wanted them to learn the process because even that you can't rely on these tools all of the time. And there's so many great things that go on in your brain when you are look, you're revising and editing and proofreading and brainstorming and all of that. And we don't want to lose those aspects as well. Um, so really great points. Anyone have anything else we want to share before we go on to the next part? Can yes. Think about the generative process and bad people looking at virus in a, in a warfare kind yes. of scenario and how quickly that stuff can, can change and we don't have the way to protect ourselves. So and we could also just all call on a hole because it's just so intimidating. And but it's they, coming they fast. That, right? mm -hmm. What I'm saying is the federal level, the people that enact the policies, they, they get Because not only are people, the, we'll say the good guys, the good guys are trying to use it for good. The bad guys are trying to use it for bad. So then the good guys have to figure out how to make sure the bad guys don't use it. So all of those things are happening, but this emergent technology is expanding at an exponential rate. And I think that's where some of the fear also comes in as well. So we have some suggestions, no matter what your industry is, um, we are just going to give a couple of examples from each one and hear from you guys different examples. So regardless of your industry, everyone has some form of HR and some form of operations, of course. And this is probably the department that has the most day-to-day -day uses, I would say, that to Steve's point, eat up the most amount of your time and then you can shorten it. Remember, don't do it at 4.15 on a Friday. <laughs> um, some examples, guides, checklists, policies, procedures, business plans, performance evaluations. Um, one of my clients I, I um, work with is City of Mount Holly and their police department. Um, some of the police officers, they said, Mary, I, I'm a 
horrible writer. I'm a great law enforcement officer. I really stink at writing. Mm. And I said, let me show you this to kind of help with summarizing. Um, I'm going to show you an example of this would be a suggestion. Um, of course, you can't just copy and paste this, but we're going to write um, an employee um, performance evaluation um, on Steve, who is the senior we'll, VP of McDonald's. We'll just make something up. Um, Steve has strong leadership skills. I, I love that I can't type when people watch. But leadership okay. skills. That's okay. Oh, it does. Yeah. Strong yeah. leadership <laughs> skills. But he is often, I know you're not late. This is for the sake of the conversation, often late to work. Now, the more I put into this, this is like the deacon of my church said, Mary, the more you put into mass, the more you're going to get out. <laughs> the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out. But watch this. Steve has demonstrated exceptional leadership skills throughout the evaluation period. I mean, I only gave it, he's got strong leadership skills and he's late to work. You can even ask it for a recommended action plan, things like that. It, it, that's just a very simple example. One that I've found is the step-by-step -step guide where you're taking the screenshots and you're trying to explain people. You can create those, yes. Can you do like a minutes? Yes. Um, give me an example. Uh, so can you write it? Before we leave that, what's interesting is I just went through this process last night writing one of these. And the, the nuance in the culture of an organization and the personal dynamics come into play, the subjectivity of the word strong leadership. Mm -hmm. All of that needs to be really thought about. And if somebody just says, I, I'm running late, I just need to do a review. It's not terribly likely, not really terribly personalized to that individual and the environment in which that person operates. And you don't have the anecdotes, you don't have the real life examples, so you can use that as a guide, then you go back in and you fill in all the Steveisms, all the things that, but it's, it's, sometimes it's good, especially if you've had a long week and your brain's a little tired and you've been writing a lot or whatnot. Maybe you're just, you know, you haven't been feeling well. It's a great starting point, a great starting point. I, I would, I would mm -hmm. second that. Going from blue sky is super difficult, but having a bit of a framework is very, very helpful for me. Something like that right there, like I used to, like it would take me a week to put my mm -hmm. words together for performance reviews and stuff like that. Like that, I could have taken bits and pieces of it, mm -hmm. plugged the personal stuff into it, and saved so many days of my life just by utilizing something like that to help me put stuff together. Or to say how to reword something. What's mm -hmm. another way to say this? If it's just negative, um, when I was student teaching mm -hmm. back in like 2001, um, my mentor, she had been teaching at that time for 50 years. She was retiring, and her she was helping with the parent-teacher conferences, and she said, always start off by finding one positive thing to say. And so she said, there was this little boy, we shall call him Johnny, and, oh sorry, okay, we shall call him Johnny, and Johnny was very challenging in the classroom. I'm sure he grew up to be a wonderful man. Very challenging in the classroom, and she said, sometimes you just gotta find something. So we're sitting at that parent-teacher conference, and she looks over at Johnny's mom, and she says, I really like the way that Johnny wears denim. <laughs> She had to say something because he loved his jeans. He loved his jeans. So sometimes you have to find a creative way or a different way to say something. And so this is also helpful as well. I don't think it's going to give you the, you know, Johnny wears denim well, but it could give you some other suggestions for character traits that maybe are more on the not so great side. Were you going to say something else? No clue what it was going to say. about writing an agreement. Yes, writing, writing an agreement. So go back to that. Give us an example. Just to say that in the Gastonia and the GBA, an agreement between us that there are a party for adults. Okay, great. Bitch, I'm going to say the GBA. Gas and Oh, I should actually put that on there. Yeah, gas. Again, the more you put in here, gas and business association. Um, 
I'm sorry, it's my OCD. I can't have it typed wrong. Um, and um, the city of Gastonia um, to host a. And what I find is if I if they don't know necessarily what it is, I put our website in there just so it now all of a sudden figures out like what is about us. So what is the, tell me a little bit more about the party. The party is for celebrating celebrating the five hundredth anniversary of the dog park. The dog park. Of yeah. Of the pirate theme. Pirate theme, thank you. <laughs> of the dog park. Um <laughs> I'll say gasandbusiness.com or org.com um, in the style of a pirate. R. Oh, it's thinking. I think we threw it off with the website. It definitely was the pirate thing. <laughs> Sometimes it also depends on how many people are utilizing it, from what I understand. Um, do you have any input on that, John? Ahoy, me hearties. Yeah, it did me. My grandson asked for mo mother, uh, your mama jokes, and it wouldn't get it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I confess I helped him. This be an agreement betwixt. Oh, my new favorite word, betwixt. Betwixt. Is that a candy bar? It should be. Oh, and there is a one-question quiz at the end of this presentation, and there is a prize for whoever gets it. Ooh. Can't tell you what's in here. Let's kill you. Okay. Um, anyways, it's going. Look at that party details. Oh, I love a good pun. Um, again, if you actually had the details for that, it would be a great starting point. Have y'all heard about the new pirate movie that's coming out? Oh, I. Yeah, it's rated R. I, I knew you were going to say that. Okay. Come on, man. Come on. What year did that come out? That, that was a dad joke alert. That was perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. That was exactly what that is. That was perfect. Okay, sorry, I got out of presentation. Uh, but Tori, behind even if you don't use any of that, you can use the concept. It's like, oh, we didn't even think about decorate. Oh, we didn't think about this. And yeah, like it's responsible. It just gets things kick started. Sometimes you just don't want to do something. And, I had a deal the other day where I, there's no put no money in it unless I signed a contract, blah, blah, blah. And it was and somebody said, You need a strategic plan to show them. Dwayne, we got your head in the camera. So I just told, that's fine. Anything I just told else, it yeah. to write me a strategic plan, gave yep. it four or five points, and then I redid it. Yes. That's it, but it saved me all that drafting. So. Exactly. It does save for the, and for the uh, outlines as well. Um, finance, would you like to share some of the, um, you, were, you said the na analysis capabilities in for, that realm? For sure. And so, so one of the things that I recently went through just personally was trying to find, we had like an other liabilities account within our accounting system. That's been a, like a vestigial thing that's been in there for years. It's on the balance sheet and I can't figure out vestigial. where the heck this customer deposit came from. And so I basically just feed in to ChatGPT a laundry list of transactions and say, help me identify where this discrepancy occurred. And it kind of goes back and finds the date and time of those transactions. So it can be very, very, very beneficial for doing work that requires scrutiny Mm, okay. That doesn't necessarily make sense just visually because when I'm looking at, I'm not a really good accountant. That's just facts. So, but so when I'm looking at a spreadsheet that has dual entry accounting on there and there's transactions going in and out and debits and credits on these four different accounts, I just, I, I just go cross-eyed, <laughs> right? So, so utilizing these tools. I don't to know how to say that data. word, vestige. What was that? I love Vest being around him because I learned so much new, <laughs> so many new vocab. How do you, what is that? V E S T I G A L. Uh, a L. Right? You, you, you have an extra U in there. Oh. That? I, I can't spell. Why are you asking me? I asked the AI to spell for me there. I think it's I A L. Oh, it told us. <laughs> there it is. Maybe. No, it's not the right one, but you get the idea. Too? Yes, so that was my question yeah, with spreadsheets. Yeah. How do you, how do you, 
I think that there, there's ChatGPT, which is text-based. There are image generators like we talked about as well. So there are a variety of different tools so that you can analyze things like that. Because like in this, you just can't drop in a spreadsheet. Say that one more time. Like spreadsheets. I was thinking like about this analyze. digital. I, I, I know. I'm sorry. I got word. everybody yeah. confused. <laughs> but to your point, when you're analyzing data in an Excel, like a spreadsheet fashion, how would we utilize mm -hmm. that? I don't think ChatGPT is there yet, but there are other AI tools that are that you're able to do. Yes. So you can. Oh. No, go ahead. No, 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 please. Different. Not this one, but yes. Well, I have, I have resources yeah. at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do an Excel formula. You could say, I want an Excel formula that has the word the in it. If I have 10,000 um, chamber members in the past at all, it'll just create a formula. And it'll say it'll make a one or a zero, and then you sort it, and you're done. Oh, okay. So like it creates Excel formulas like magic. So so that convert yeah. Like if I said I downloaded a list of everything that had the word the, in, or just every chamber name, and some of them have the, some don't, but really I want to take that out, but it's just way too much work, it's in the middle, all that. I just put, write an Excel formula that searches for the word the in the cell. Searches for the word, I'm gonna put it in quotes. Or, yeah, that's fine. The in the cell? Yeah. Okay, and then. And then it just oh made God. that and then it'll make it like a one or a zero, and it just tells you where to put it in your And Excel, then copy code, yep. And then you sort it, erase everybody there, and then you're done, whereas. Just please call me Abby, wow. Yeah. Right, so again, we can't upload on this a spreadsheet, but we can create tools to help us inside the spreadsheet, if that makes sense. And that, need any information. And that goes back to my, my, my mm -hmm. thought, which is like fundamental knowledge, framework knowledge, understanding what we are trying to achieve and just having a good education lets you use these tools. This is fire, right? Yes. How you use and control the flame will allow you to weld cool bicycles yes. together or you can burn your house down. You know, I mean, it's going to be, it's a tool in the hands of the craftsman. Um, he's going to show you something really cool later too that on Zoom the other day with Steve, my mind was like, I, it just, there's so many, we, we could never in this session go over all the different utilizations, but hopefully in your mind you're already thinking about ways that you can use this that we'll touch upon at the end too. And I'll, I'll throw one more thing out there because she asked a question is like, how do you get ChatGPT to look at the data that you want it to? If it's tabular data and it's not too, too big, you can just copy paste it in ChatGPT and it'll, yes. it'll read it. There's also, this is a little bit of a higher level, but you can use ChatGPT's API to plug in your own relational databases or other tabular data and have it analyze it. Yeah, there are cousin apps that will, sibling apps actually, that would that can be really helpful with that as well. Um, but he's right. I sometimes think, oh, it's not that smart. I mean, it's smart, but it can't be. And then you ask it to write the Dr. Seuss thing, or you just copy, you know, copy like select all from a spreadsheet. You can do that, but you just can't like upload a file if that makes sense. Um, okay, this is my cup of tea. Sorry, I'm going to go. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Okay, so we, we heard several times, like, the Dr. Seuss thing, or in the style of a pirate. Mm -hmm. So the skeptic in me is, did that get programmed into chat, chat GPT? So in other words, there was a coder that said, mm -hmm. I'm going to have my salespeople go out, and I want them to be able to, to show that ChatGPT is legit. And so I'm gonna program ChatGPT and tell it what a pirate style is. And then I'm gonna have my ChatGPT salespeople go out and say, look at this, it can do it in the form of a pirate. Did they do that? Or how does it know the style of the pirate? Is it like scrubbing the web for like yes. all things Yes, all terminology, verbs, yeah. nouns, adjectives, expressions, um, it will pull those types of things. You can say, I want this written in MLA format. Oh, wow. Yes, so okay. it will pull and it's synthesizing all that information. It's not going to be right all the time. And when you create things, not that I've done this multiple times, but in the style of a pirate, you start to see some similarities. Like, could it do in the style of a valley girl? 
oh, I don't know, but we're about to find out. We're going to write a social media post in just a second in the style of Valley Girl. And then if we can't get, if it doesn't understand Valley Girl, we'll have to maybe think around. Again, those are higher level thinking skills we're using, even though we're using AI, how we can make it say, oh my gosh, Becky. Look at her social media post. Okay. <laughs> As she's setting this up, Jenna, I found where you can put it, this is my writing style, or this is some writing samples, and then you like, I copied and pasted like four letters of recommendation I've written in the last couple years. Then it says, write a letter of recommendation in this style for Tori, who is da 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 and then it just spit it out, copy, paste, send, and everything. Like, but you put in. But I gave it my own. Yeah, so you have to give it to your, yes. It kept it on that part, but then it's done. Like so it's it, once it's gone, it's gone. It doesn't know Steve's style in the same right window. now. In the same window, in same in the same thread. Correct. In that same. In the thing. same thread. Yeah. Here's my mm -hmm. style. Or chat. Right in this style mm -hmm. about blah blah blah. Okay. Um, I often I do a lot of ghostwriting, and so when I write a press release, I'm like ex for the city of Mount Holly. Um, I will write the quote for Mayor Huff. I'll write the quote for the city manager. I'll write it and. I've known them for so long that I know different things that they've said. And if it's someone I don't know, I will pull writing samples and, I, and I'll put that together. So that is helpful as well because I can't say, please make this sound like Brian Huff, but I, can, I know that they're different. Like he's always going to want to talk about the involvement in the, uh, you know, thanking the community for their support. Like there are different um, ways that he speaks that it may not be the semantics or the structure of it but it's topics he talks about and then i go in there and add the other flair to it if that makes sense um, but sitting there with a blank screen trying to come up with quotes that are helping and, and that especially that friday at 4 15 that that can be something that you know ai is really helpful with I was um told this mm -hmm. is because i have a lot out there that i've written mm -hmm. in social media and all that I ask it to write a speech in the voice of Tony mm -hmm. Burks, Gastonia. It wrote it, and it did sound like me, but someone told me it did this because I have a more conversational approach. It used the word ink three times. I would die before I would use the word ink in a speech, but somehow it did that when it was doing it in my own. It probably picked up if it was conversational. Yes, so then it's going to pick up other similar. Again, that's a great example with the accuracy. It's close, but no cigar. Um, and so we just have to make sure we're, we're looking at that. In terms of communication, marketing, we talked about press releases. Now, um, going back to the quote, because I, I don't want you to think, you know, we're just going in there and just making fictitional, you know, fictitious, 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 fictitious things. Up, right. I already know the types of things that Mayor Huff is going to want to say. So all I'm doing is using it as a tool to kind of put those together and then I massage and, and, and revise and edit that. So it's like a starting point. Because I already know in my head, I could just say, write a quote about this, but I'm not, I'm, I'm being intentional with what type of quote that I want. Um, so that's where you people could get in trouble for just Make a quote that you know Steve D'Avria said about such and such. And he reviews it, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, so Ab yes, that's, I would say that. yes absolutely. Um, so in terms of communications, in terms of marketing, um, I would like to show you real quickly. Um, uh, so just writing a social media post, um, and we'll try the we'll try it first, and then we'll try the, um, the same thing with Valley Girl. So um, I'm going to say, write a social media post. Um, I'll use a real life example, the Mount Holly Community Garden. Um, sharing the benefits of mulch. How much can a person say about mulch? Emoji That's how you know, appropriately is. used increase the views of a of a post according to the algorithm wow. by thirty percent and hashtags as well. And so right there, calling all green thumbs in the Mount Holly community. Now, the more that you read these, you can tell. You can see a significant shift in my <laughs> social media <laughs> posts. I think for a couple of days there, I was getting a little too you know. I got really excited about ChatGPT. Um, again, make sure it's accurate because it will very confidently, Spark will be like, oh, yes, you need to have a pH level of, I mean, sometimes it's just wrong. So make sure you go through. 
but this right here would have taken me, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes to get all the information, oh, pick the emoji, the whatever. Um, then I can say, um, rewrite this in the style of a valley girl. I, spark, don't let me down. Hey, like, OMG, calling all you grievy groom. OMG, it really is. So, like, cool. first yes, things queen. first, mulch is like a total moisture magnet. <laughs> it says OMG. OMG. And get this, babe, mulch is like a soil superstar. Yes, queen. Thank you, you for the best example. Of yes, and then you can say rewrite it or have a formal tone. I never thought that Spark would be able to do Valley Girl. This, my email is now from you from here on out. We'll come from you. Valley Girl. You're a pirate, I'm Valley Girl. Okay. And just call each other out when you know it's a Um, That actually just really freaked me out. I didn't think it was going to do it. Well, let me go back. We're, we're going to, oh, well, I'm not going to, if there was something naughty in there, I'm sorry. I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, writing, uh, I, I did want to show you this one very quickly, and then I know we need to move on, but um, I am, I'm trying to think of a, uh, a really boring press release. Very important, art, the tax value, it's very That's important, right. but write um, 10 examples of a title of a press release about the adopted 2023 property tax values in Gaston County. I mean, that may get some people really fired up, but. They're fired up already on this. <laughs> I mean, they are already. But those are titles. So right. these are titles. So what I do is I look at these 10 and I say, oh, I really, especially because they have a colon. So sometimes I'll take the front part of one and then I'll take this and, and I'll make it my own, um, which is it really my own? That's a question we talked about. But um, I feel like it's a good starting, a good starting point. You can also say like utilizing the words just to make sure if you have a keyword in there, um, that's a huge Huge. Um, if you can't write write an article about all the tax rates, here's the cities because it doesn't know it. We still have to go to Robert Kellogg's Facebook post. I still have to text Steve at four o'clock yeah. and say, "Can you what help me the, find these? Is this? is this out there?" Because and I even put it in chat GP because sometimes even though I'm using it a lot, I forget it's still there because it's and I'm I'm actually good with that. Um, but I put it in there and it it, it wasn't 100 percent correct. Um, business intelligence. B-I. Now, for those of us like me that are not as fluent at, in business intelligence as my friend John here, I did ask ChatGPT to come up with a definition. I wanted you to check and see if that mm -hmm. is accurate. Involves collecting and analyzing data to gain valuable insights that inform, that inform, inform decision making <laughs> and drive business success. <laughs> That's perfect because I didn't know what business intelligence meant at all. I just put that word, those two words out there and to sound intelligent. But, but no, tr truthfully, it really means the analysis of data that we're collecting. And it can also, it, it can also mean um, a number of different things, like what are your KPIs and how you yes. get to those metrics? How do, you, how do you even define your metrics? And it's really interesting because you can use ChatGPT to say, what are other IT firms in the country using as KPIs for financial performance, Ooh. for customer satisfaction? And then you can start using that to, to build some systems around that. So if you're collecting your net promoter scores on ticket closures, um, maybe we don't know how to interpret that. Um, or maybe it's in this giant database and we have a lot of you know, tabular data in a spreadsheet. We just have a spreadsheet full of numbers. How can we create interesting graphics mm -hmm. on that? Uh, Microsoft's using a product called Microsoft Power BI, along with their power line, uh, line of different power 
programs that quickly and easily, and I use the word easily in quotes, analyze large data sets and create beautiful visualizations based on that data. And it's really, really, really powerful because I'm a very visual learner, and if I have a picture, it's a much, much easier, um, it's much easier for me to understand something versus just looking at numbers on a page. So if I can see a pie chart versus, you know, just reg random percentages, it really, really helps me out. So BI, um, I won't get off the rails on that right now because- I want you to show your, I want you to do your- I get off the rails on that? Oh, sure. sure. Mm -hmm. And we talked before about how this AI is generally going to hit mid manage like mid tier jobs. I have to tell you, in this area, those jobs were higher tier, mm -hmm. higher function, mm -hmm. master's degree level. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the thought like that just scared the crap out of me because. But here's the what th here's what here's what I would say um, to ameliorate some concerns is that your understanding of business intelligence, if you can layer on utilization of these tools, instead of taking a month to create um, an analysis, it might take you two hours. Mm -hmm. And the visualization on top of it, you won't even have to touch. You still have to know what to tell it to do. We're still, right now, in charge of the machines. So my heart sank. I said right now, did you pick that up? I'm kidding. <laughs> my heart sank because I spend hours, like I didn't realize, I, I mean, I don't consider myself an artist, but I said, spent hours on things like infographics or publication, you know, book, booklets, products that get print billboards. <laughs> and then to me though, like for an infographic, that's one of those that's so, it take, it's so, such fine tune to detail that at first I went, oh my gosh, well then what are people gonna hire me for? But then I thought I still have to be able to tell, I, that I have to come up with the idea of what that infographic, what aspects it's gonna pull, what does the layout look like? They can give me suggestions, but then I still have to, technical word, zhuzh it. Hmm. I have to zhuzh it, and we don't know how to spell that. Okay, your demo, and then we are, it's 1118, and we wanna allow a couple minutes. Um, let me just see, um, yeah, can we switch over? Maybe. Just because, are you going to do that one from the Zoom? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> so I've prepared two different things. Um, to, set the, to set the groundwork, imagine a master builder builds a house with like a normal house you walk into. My level of construction is Duplo blocks, not even Lego blocks, like <laughs> Duplo. So that's my understanding of coding, basically. Right. So I'm a very, 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 very entry level coder. I can look at things and understand them, but then I can't really build anything out of it, right? So using these tool sets allows someone with a very entry level knowledge to build interesting things and someone who has expert master's level knowledge to build very interesting things. So I, I won't go into Replit here, but the bottom line is this is a very fast way to create an environment where we're going to host a web page, right? So I'll create a new one. We're going to call this the demystifying. I'm not going to be wrapped around the axle on, on spelling. Our Zoom, on our Zoom, it, he showed us timer. how to make a timer. Oh, I've done it. Did I make it? Oh, the sorry. It's got a bad word in it. That's okay. Don't show it on the camera. No. Okay. It says getting his stuff done. Okay. Oh, it's you got to change it in the uh, title. Sorry. There you go. Okay, so it's just going to give us a uh, DAI. <laughs> Great, Repl. He taught me this two days ago. It's amazing. Okay, so <clears throat> here we're creating a HTML. So, so a web app runs on two different ways. It uses an HTML document, CSS. HTML, the index, tells the web browser what it is. CSS tells it how to present it. And the JavaScript tells it what to do, right? So that's really, really fundamental in, in terms of basic HTML coding. So we can come, go into ChatGPT and say, create a stopwatch. It's wild, guys. Using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's like having flashbacks from that Fortran 
right, right. So that was a pretty simple prompt, right? And I know that, okay, I can copy this code. This is the HTML code. I'm going to go back to my replet, and I'm just going to overwrite everything here with uh, what ChatGP told me to put in there. I'm going to go back and copy the, so I got the HTML code. Now I'm going to copy the CSS. CSS, which stands for Cascade Style Sheet. It's like Ikea. It's like all the things are there, and we're building a desk. Thank you, Mary, for helping Thank you. Do you like my what analogy? Because I'm, I'm not. I'm already lost. I, this. Well, don't, 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 don't worry about the details here, but imagine the fact that I roughly understand how to kludge these things together and then let everything else work. The vocab. All right, so I have no clue what's going to happen right now. I just copied and pasted everything into an Say, environment. Say like I just a valley created. girl, like a valley girl. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this right CSS. here. Look, it just made a it stopwatch. Created a website. It created a website. So this is an actual website that we just created with a start, stop, and reset time. So let's see if it works. Oh, it has milliseconds. Of course oh. it does. But I don't like the background, John. You don't like the background? I'm just kidding. He, Steve That's told me you I could did. change. Yeah. You could change it. Now I want yeah. it with a blue you background. Did. You absolutely can. So I want to say. Um, did you paste that into a Word document? To a replica. No, it's, no, this, it's another this app. This is environment. So, 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 okay. so. Is replica an AI app? Yes. Or is it something else? Oh, well, I don't know about all that. Yeah, yeah. Type in replica.com. Yes. Yeah. Start there. So what Replit allows you to do, so, so if you are what's called a full stack developer, you understand the code that you're putting into something, but you also have to put that code into a computer that will host it. We call that an environment. That's a physical server. You load an operating system on a physical server or a notebook. We're all probably using Windows 11, maybe a Linux distribution, maybe an Apple product. That has an operating system on that. Within that operating system, we install applications. Those applications host websites, Excel, Microsoft Power BI, all these different things. So Replit simplifies the ability, your ability to create an environment. So now like 50% of what it would take to be a full stack developer, meaning from the power yes. to the code, is gone. This is just boom. That fast I created an environment to host this new website that we just built together. Yes and yes. It so you, public site, yeah. you you can you and you can use Replit's resources certainly for a cost to host sure. your own site, yeah. Really? With custom domain names and 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 all this all interesting the bells things. And whistles. Um let me let me pull up a different one that. So here's a different Replit that I created. Um, that this 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 one probably has 25 minutes of work involved in it. So this is my timer project, okay? And my understanding of JavaScript is really, really limited. But I need to create a timer with a label that says this is the demystifying AI project. I'm going to start that timer. While I'm working on that, because something's cooking in the background, I'm going to start a different timer for a presentation prep. And I'm going to start that timer. And then I'm going to create another timer for um, I'm watering my garden. So I'm working on these three tasks, maybe simultaneously or whatever. Right? This is just an interesting tool. This is not novel. This is not something that hasn't been created. But what my suspicion is, and I think what other people's suspicions are, is that we live in a world with a lot of software. We're going to live in a world with a lot more software. Because we've worked on some projects within my company and one of my best friends who's an amazing developer and one of the most intelligent people I've ever met is like, I'm not going to solve a problem that's already been solved. So he's not going to create a new punch clock because the time and effort it would have taken to develop it um, that might be a little bit specific for the GBA um, doesn't make sense because Intuit has a product and it's relatively cheap. And um, so, so my, my position is that we're going to... we're lowering the barrier to develop applications 
to create uh, analytics processes. We're, we're lowering the barrier to entry for creating things. And, and ultimately, that will lead to a world with more software where you can create systems that have already been solved for, but make them much more custom and personalized to your use case. And I think that's really, really interesting. So someone with, I would consider, a high school level understanding of math and 20 hours of YouTube under their belt yeah. will be able to right. start building interesting web-based applications, native applications. It doesn't matter. Whatever your interests are, you can start to apply these, uh, these, these to those problems. Yes, it's, incre it's increasing the accessibility, I would say, for all different levels of um, background knowledge. So we're going to skip ahead. Do you want to go back to sure. Does I'm anybody sorry, else want to see anything else? I had the two demo. That was, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. Okay. No. Do you want to go back? To the yes, please. Okay. Um, yeah, so note taking guides, checklists, outlines, like he said, app development, um, press releases, interview questions that are specific. I thought that was a really fun one that everyone could use. Um, step by step instructions. It goes on and on and on. Replit is the app. Yeah, I did this in case anybody. We can probably, I mean, I can send a, another version that doesn't have all the, the R2D2 in there and the typos, yes. Um, but the apps to try, Replit, excuse me, um, Canva, if anyone uses Canva for any, and these are just examples. Um, there is AI built into that, especially if you're trying to write anything. It's not as good as ChatGPT. Grammarly is one of my favorite apps of all time, and that helps with your tone, with sentence structure, all of that. It also has AI now. There are image generators. That Dall E2, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, it's super spendy. It's the Open AI's image generator. I don't know how much it is, but everywhere I read kept saying it's very expensive. But that is one that we were talking about before about um, creating different images. There's a headshot generator, which I tried too late to ask him for a geeky picture. You may not have been a geek when you were younger, but I obviously was. But you may need to share at some point. He mm -hmm. said he made a headshot with a headshot AI generator. That was wild. And then Synthesia is a video um, AI app where if you don't like getting on camera, this is 95% of my clients, um, if you don't like getting on camera, you can create instructional videos, you can use avatars, you can, it's like a video game, pick what they want, and yes, I'm excited to look into that. Um, this was a great article I found, it said the best AI productivity tools in 2023 from Zapier. You can just also Google best AI tools, yeah, exactly, or even ask Jeff GPT what are the best tools, and it will give you some really good suggestions. Um, I know we only have a couple of minutes, but